Hi, my name is Emily Höckert and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Lapland in Finland. And then I'm also working at the University of Helsinki in a research project called Politur, which is about policies and practices of tourism industry in Central America. So in my study, in my in my research, I'm bringing together most of all culture studies of tourism and then development studies. And my the empirical context of my study is is the rural tourism development in Nicaragua, and more specifically this community-based tourism project in the northern highlands uh, of the country. And just like in many countries, also in Nicaragua. Um, the Nicaraguan tourism ministry and the development aid organizations and NGOs, among others, they have been perceiving tourism as this effective tool to promote well-being in rural areas. And rural community-based tourism has been connected especially to, to, to the goals of poverty reduction and empowerment and, and so on. So therefore, different kind of kinds of tourism developers and, and students and, and researchers like me uh, have become these frequent kind of frequent quests uh, guests in in many rural communities. So my my actually in, in my current study I'm focusing on this um, on the relationships between these kind of tourism experts, could be, be consultants or 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 tourism researchers or different kind of tourism developers who who arrive to rural communities because they are kind of they're willing to help the rural communities to make benefits from tourism. So in my study I'm I'm interested about the encounters between these tourism experts and then the than rural communities. So what happens when, what happens in these encounters? Um, and what the thing is that what has made me a little bit confused there is that it seems that, for example, the the, the communities. I, yeah, I was supposed to show you the map. This is where this is where I've been doing my study. So this is the northern northern highlands of of Nicaragua forms this Ruta del Café, the coffee route, and it's, it's San Ramon, uh, where it's, San Ramon has been considered more or less as a pioneer of, of, of rural community-based tourism in the country, and they've been working with tourism already for more than 10 years. So this is, this is the, where my, my study locates. This is where I've been collecting the, the ethnographic data. So what has confused me here is that Although the communities have been working with tourism for more than 10, 10 years, it seems like they they never really like they're still considered as as not ready to work with tourism. So just like in in tourism research, is often pointed out that um, it seems like the rural communities actually never really become um, active subjects of their own development. Instead, they they remain as this kind of objects of of different kind of social projects. And so it seems like this also, I think I, I should maybe bring up here that um, there's also, for example, volunteers coming to, to, to stay with these communities and they come with different kind of social projects and they do not, um, for example, last year there were bigger groups that they, they didn't stay, they didn't pay for, for their stay. Like they stayed in this accommodation that has been prepared for tourists and actually the locals have been taking huge loans uh, to build these houses but then there are still volunteers coming and also students and researchers who, who want to stay there for free so it's not this is my point that it seems that they're not really recognized that they're uh, tourism entrepreneurs who are offering um, this tourism service and 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 this is what what um, what i have noticed that people living in the people working with tourism in, in these communities that they have become kind of tired of being targets of these different kind of development projects and also targets of of objects of research and because it's also that these we, we could call them as tidy guests where these tidy guest uh, tourism developers or also uh, also volunteers who kind of come with the intentions to organize the life of, of, of their hosts. And um, and this is, it seems that, that that is kind of contradictory that somebody comes from outside and says all the time like that you don't have enough material conditions to receive visitors or you do not have the needed skills and so on. 
So this is this is kind of has been um, caused that the locals are not that motivated to work with tourism. I do not go, go but uh, I hope you get the point. Uh, so this is actually what has made me a little less convinced about the responsible uh, character of this kind of participatory tourism initiatives and, and kind of this kind of rural tourism development. However, instead of disposing and disposing the whole idea of local participation, I th I'd be willing to understand why are we actually longing uh, for or after this kind of participation, why we think that, why we kind of we see that this, uh, why are we looking after this community and, and the idea of doing doing things together but then on the other hand also why has this idea of, of participation of doing and, and being together why has it actually caused so much critique and frustration so and i i've seen that emmanuel levinas and jacques derrida's discussions of what hospitality is and what to to welcome and to receive should mean i i, I see that these discussions um would have much to offer to this uh, participatory paradigm in tourism, but also in, in, in development studies. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I'm approaching the idea of, of ethical encounters through the notion of hospitality. So I'm borrowing the concept of hospitality from the basic toolbox of, of tourism studies, and I'm, I'm looking for these encounters uh, through this notion. Yes. And what especially Emmanuel Levinas um, suggests and also what, what Derrida discusses about it, that the welcome that we should think that the welcome of the other be becomes before the welcome to the other so this means that that my yes to the other uh, is always an answer to the yes of the other um, I we could think about this in diff different levels but the idea is that would that we would always have to be aware if whether the other is welcoming if whether the other is welcoming us and this is kind of a very radical idea of intersubjectivity which disrupts the possibility of 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 being a responsible subject alone and levinas we could say that this is also levinas idea is kind of radical um radical because it's this this idea of his idea of ethical subjectivity is is drastically different from this kind of Western individual, individual, spontaneous, autonomous subject. Um, I see if I I forget here, but I guess this is would be what how what, how how I see the importance here is the idea that you are not actually be able to be a responsible subject alone. That you're not, but it's like responsibility is always something that is is intersubjective and it's it's also always relational. So yes, so I'm I'm saying that that um, that Levinas' idea of 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 intersubjectivity is not only different from the Western idea of of individual subject, but it also um, it, it it I think it tells a lot to us about about tourism, and I would say that. That I, I I see that this idea of that the respecting the priority of welcome of the other before the welcome to the other it's it's also different from from tourism from practice and also from research. So I say that not only that we tend to take for granted the welcome of the other, but we are also not capable of welcoming the other. And we can think about this in a global scale. We think about the the so-called global north and global south. That it's it's something that we we consider that is possible from from for example me from Finland. Uh, I'm considering that I can travel wherever around the globe. But but this kind of the reciprocity, this like the people from the global south, uh, it's 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 considerably more difficult for them um, to to come to global north often the people actually drown in the Mediterranean when they try to do this um, and so on and this is also something that we can think about in between the core and periphery about between urban and rural areas but what Levinas talks about he talks especially about these face-to-face -face encounters between self and other and I say that this is something that is when we when we look at community-based tourism that this is what uh, what happens there that it's kind of that 
that we take for granted that the other welcomes us, but we are not we are not capable of welcoming the other. And this is what I I I would see that when when tourism experts arrive with these many preset ideas of what tourism is or is supposed to be or what about the other how the other is and does not know or what kind of help the other need um, needs this actually hinders us from listening what the other is saying so although the other would be silent or would be resisting the initiative that we still are the, the other is still always interpreted interpreted so although the other would be say like i'm not welcoming you or I'm, i do not want to have this kind of project but you think that yes i think i think this would be really good for you so as bivak says the other cannot not want something in this case cannot not want tourism um so i would say yeah so i would say that this kind of undermines the possibility of envisioning more ethical and sustainable forms of tourism and as a con in general like this this individual this idea is it's is hindering us from from vision envisioning alternatives so as a result of my study i ask how respecting the priority of the welcome of the other over the responsibility for the other could open up spaces for more ethical relationships in in the in, in, in tourism and I continue this is a very romantic statement but I would I, I would suggest that we should continue to uh, to search for hospitality in in tourism and in thank you for listening and in case you get interested um, you can read about I, I've been writing about I have written about this in this um, chapter called Unlearning Through Hospitality, and you can find it in, in our book, which is called Disruptive Tourism and its Untidy Guests. Yes, and please, if you have any questions, you can con contact me um, via this email address. Thank you.